intermediate accounting, accounting for bonds and debt instruments. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. The source for this presentation is the Kiso and Wygant textbook, which has been published for many years, and Wiley.com is the publisher with the website that you can go to. This is our last video on bonds priced at a discount and at a premium. When we left, when we left off in the prior video, we had purchased an IBM bond as an investor. The bond has a face value of $1,000. We only paid $980, and we booked a discount on bond payable of $20. We earned interest, so we got cash in the door of $35 and had interest income. And since the bond had a 10-year life, we took $2 of that $20 out of bond, discount on bond payable each year and recognized it as income. The explanations here in red. If you paid less than face value, 980, then you would receive at maturity 1,000. That difference is income to you. And then at maturity, as the investor, we would get cash back and we would... Um, redeem our bond at a face value of $1,000. I now want to go to the uh, journal entries that relate to the transactions that we just saw. Let's look at the T accounts that relate to those journal entries. This is a bond purchased in blue at a discount. So we get a bond in our books at $1,000. We only pay $980. That's a credit or a reduction in cash. And the difference goes to a credit balance a bond payable of twenty dollars. We earn interest income of thirty five dollars and we got cash in entry two. And each year we take two dollars of that discount and we move it into bond income which is entry three. So what's happening is is that over time each year two dollars comes out of the discount on bond payable account and goes into the bond income account and we call that accretion. The bond accretes from the discount up to par. So we go from 980 in our books up to par. So as we recognize income, we call that bond accretion. Bond accretion. What if we bought the bond and we paid a premium for it? Same type of scenario. We bought a bond with a face amount of $1,000. That's the asset that goes on our books. But we actually paid more than a thousand for it. We paid a thousand twenty. In this case, we record the difference for twenty dollars as a premium on bond payable. Same as before, as an investor, we get cash each each uh, year. In this case, twice a year since it's a corporate bond, and we record income. Same as the other example. But in this case, we're going to take that premium that we paid and we're going to take it out of the premium account each year and recognize an expense. And in red, we explain that because we paid more $1,020 than we receive at maturity $1,000, we're recognizing an expense each year. And then at maturity, we get $1,000 back. We remove the $1,000 asset from our books. Here are the T accounts related to bond purchased at a discount. We paid $1,020. We put a $1,000 asset on our books. The difference goes to premium and bond payable. We earned interest, interest income. We got cash in the door of $35. And then each year we're going to take $2 out of premium on bond payable as a credit, and we're going to recognize a debit or expense. So over time each year, we're going to debit credit premium on bond payable so the account goes to zero. And we're going to debit or recognize a bond expense each year. So I want to wrap up this discussion by talking about, again, the why. Why would a bond be purchased at a discount or a premium? Well, discount implies that something is less valuable. So if interest rates increase and we can now buy a 10-year bond at 8.5%, the 7% bond would be less valuable. It would be priced at less than $1,000. Whether you're buying it or selling it, the market would demand that the bond be priced at a discount. It's not as valuable. The opposite is true of the bond price at a premium. 
interest rates decrease, bonds at 10-year bonds are now being offered at 6%, less than 7, so therefore the 7% bond is more valuable. So the market says that 7% bond should be priced at a premium or something more than $1,000. Another way of saying it is premium, you pay more than par, discount, you pay less than par. The premium to an investor becomes an expense. The discount to an investor becomes income. That's the end of part six and wraps up our bonds purchased at a premium and a discount series. You'll find part seven on YouTube. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. A complete list of our videos is on the website. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring using gotomeeting.com over the internet, stltest.net is our website. Here's our email address and our phone number, and we will see you next time.